pretty late then in 96 with a 500. Um, yeah, that's true. And, and were you drawn to it initially by the, the games? Is that what it was? or? Uh, you know what? Uh, even before I had the computer, you know, I had some family that had an Amiga and so on. So it was always the, the, uh, the wow factor. They have all those cool games and so on. Uh, but also as a kid, uh, my parents sent me to a programming course in AMOS and it was on the 500s. So uh, even before I got my first computer, um, you know, I've had some experience uh, writing a little bit of code. Uh, so it was always more than just, you know, games. Interesting. Um, you mentioned Amiga E. Were you programming? Uh, uh, were you programming before that, or is that your first introduction uh, to programming? Well, again, I, I started with AMOS, and then once I got the uh, Amiga 1200, I switched to Amiga E because uh, you know AMOS is pretty limited. Uh, if you want to make something uh, you know, OS friendly, that was the possibility with AMOS, really. Uh, yeah, just like you know, basically. Uh, like the, the, I had some need to create uh, several apps for my own personal use, like for high school events and so on. So yeah, AMOS and Amiga E was the the starting point. Uh, and yeah, later it just kind of you know clicks. I wanted to do more. Uh, so you know, I'm fully self-taught basically. Um, yeah, that's how we went. Hmm. And uh, how much programming time do you get in the week? Because you have two major applications for Morph OS that are available. You've got the browser. Yep. Uh, and then you have Iris. Yep. Uh, and a day job. And maybe family. <laughs> yeah. So how yeah. much time do you get to actually code these days? You know, I figure it's about one hour, maybe two hours in the afternoon uh, that I get to do something for the Morpho West, but I'm not always super productive. You know, works, work is tiring, family uh, has some demands as well. So sometimes, you know, I just sit in front of my power book and write 10 lines of code during the whole evening. Um, but yeah, sometimes it goes quicker and I do a lot more events. Um, you know, winter's coming, so I'll, I'll be sure to spend more time at home. So that means I should be more productive again uh, than I was in the summer. So, you know, it's like when I feel like it, I, I write some code. Nice. So why did you decide to take on a project like WebKit, which is a monster project? It, Where's George? Hey, George. <laughs> you know what? It's not that big of a monster. Uh, like I work in games industry, and the game engines compared to a browser, these are monsters. The, the a web browser is quite simple uh, compared to that. It's a lot less code. But yeah, you know, we needed a new browser, right? The Odyssey stopped being updated, and to be honest. It, wasn't really possible to update it anymore. Way too much work because the WebKit over the years it has changed way too much and the old integration simply didn't make sense anymore. As if uh, Apple has made a lot of good changes in WebKit which kind of obsoleted uh, the stuff that the Odyssey relied on. Uh, so a lot of stuff that was uh, written specifically for origin browser uh, that's not integrated into WebKit itself, so it's like no longer needed. Uh, but yeah, from our point of view, that basically meant that you had to start from scratch. And, you know, basically I started getting annoyed by the websites that I do use not working anymore, they're not working properly. You finally decided, you know, it's time to flip the table. <laughs> you gotta do something yourself, right? Awesome. So, are you getting a lot of support 
for like other developers helping you in the in the code base, or is it mainly just yourself? Uh, you know, these days it's mostly myself. There were quite a lot of uh, difficult uh, things to solve in the OS itself and the SDK uh, before the first version came out. Uh, so Piro has helped uh, a lot with uh, all of that. I mostly, you know, identified where the issue is and, you know, uh, simply asking to take a look. Um, and yeah, we were able to fix a lot of things that way. Um, while I, you know, he fixed things, I focused on our missing bits and so on. There is a lot that you have to like change and prepare for a modern browser to work in the OS. So, you know, we had to release a new operating system version to even for me to even be able to release the initial version of the to the public. Hmm. And uh, why did you decide to do Iris as well as the uh, the Wayfair? So why, why well, did you Iris actually, that? yeah. I was actually happened uh, before we heard. I believe I started working on that in around 2016. Mm. Um, yeah, again, we had a need for an email client. Like, you know, there's two, there's Yaman, Simple Mail, and their base, sorry, they both suck, right? Uh, they, they've been good in the 90s, but we kind of moved on. Uh, you can't have proper email these days without full HTML support. Uh, you can't have it without full IMAP support, including all of the new authentic authentication methods. Uh, and for that, you actually have to work with Google, with Yahoo and Microsoft quite closely because they have to certify you yeah. and so on. So we have like a huge list of demands that you have to meet to get certified. And you can't really do it with an app that wasn't designed for that. That was, you know, designed many, many years ago and, and not really kept up to date uh, with the standards. So yeah, the, the idea was always, you know, to create something that's, um, that feels like a modern application, that's it, right? Nice, yeah, the, the, the platforms definitely need more of that, for sure. Um, so can you, uh, outside of the applications that that you've made, can you talk about some of the other applications that you use or enjoy, your favorite applications, <coughs> your top three? You know, these days when I uh, do use MorphOS, it's basically just for programming. I don't do much else. Some web browsing, but I'm kind of, you know, testing my own work <laughs> uh, while on it. Um, so yeah, I basically, because, I, uh, yeah, I thought about this, and what can I tell you? I, most of the time I have the uh, Flow Studio open, which is our IDE, uh, Wayfarer, and, you know, the app that I'm working on or I'm trying to fix and so on. I don't really use uh, much else because I simply don't have the time, right? And if I want to play games, I play modern games. So, <laughs> not on a... Well, it seems like you need to start working on some games then. <laughs> Sorry? You need to start porting some games. For <laughs> uh, you know what? Again, I work in, in game dev. I'm not going to touch games <laughs> outside of work. I have enough of that at work. Okay. So a actually, at, at, uh, we'll, we'll have another question here and then maybe open it up. Uh, I, I have another question and then open it up to the audience here. So um, are you working on anything new uh, outside of Iris and Wayfair? Uh, do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, some smaller things. Basically, there's going to be two new applications coming with the new Morph OS release that I wrote. Um, yeah, but it's you know just smaller tools that I mostly need myself. Um, yeah, so nothing like super big, like a zip archive creator app, for example. Right, tiny new feel. I've spent maybe a month on that. There's also a hex editor coming in the new MorphOS version mm -hmm. uh, that I wrote. That was actually quite fun because um, I decided to make it fully scriptable. Uh, so you can do quite a bit of fun stuff with that. Uh, but 
you know, uh, I'll announce it properly later with some screenshots and so on. Uh, yeah, well, I imagine your hands are quite full with uh, just keeping email and browsing up to date, so. Uh, you know what, especially keeping up with uh, WebKit, that eats a lot of my time. I try to work on Iris as well to keep it up to date um, and add some features that I'm, you know, there's several users that keep asking me for new stuff to be added, which is cool. Uh, I appreciate that actually. Um, but yeah, I don't really have time for much else. Yeah. Which is a bit of a PD. I wish I could, I could have the time to look into an office port, for example, but that would mean basically not working on any new WFR changes for the next year or so. Well, I, I use uh, HTML5test.com uh, to look at the browsers occasionally. There's a lot of sections and modules. I'd imagine adding one of those is a significant amount of work because you're interacting with the platform and you've probably done most of the easier ones, I'm assuming. And I, I, yeah. is there any new modules or sections that you're planning on adding? Y you're familiar with the website, right? Uh, the what, sorry? Uh, HTML5test.com. Yeah, yeah. And how it has the uh, different modules, like for payments and all the rest of it. Like, yes. You know what, a lot of those things, they simply don't make sense in the Amiga world. Like, you don't want to be doing payments because it's not a problem, right? You don't have all of that integrated into US, uh, into the OS, and you're not going to have. Um, I would assume that people wouldn't even want to do that. Um, there's a lot of stuff like WebRTC, which is what we are using to communicate right now, yeah. right? Uh, which simply doesn't make sense because, you know, a modern PC does all of the uh, video uh, encoding and decoding in the hardware. In the hardware, which simply is not present in our, our old Star PC Max and so on. Um, so yeah, even if we got some of that stuff working on the modern, more modern GPUs, uh, it's only going to be a small subset of our hardware that can actually handle that. Um, so, you know, the user base for it, you know, we in Amiga, we don't have a huge user base, right? And yeah. If, am I, if I'm to spend my time on something that's going to benefit like 2%, um, no, okay. I, we're gonna do it. It doesn't make sense, right? Um, so yeah, like you've mentioned, all of the easy stuff is already done, basically. Good. So it's just this hard and super hard that that's left. Um, and again, a lot of it doesn't really make sense in our context. And as for the others, well, I'll announce it when they're ready, right? Uh, I don't. Or, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Randall Jessup was one of the I think he was a Commodore engineer. Um, he went to Mozilla and he did a lot of the original WebRTC work. So one of the folks oh. that was part of the, the early Amiga team, the Commodore team, actually implemented a lot of the uh, WebRTC stuff. That's cool. Yeah. So it's, uh, Interesting. it'd be cool if we had it, for sure. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I worked for a company that basically did something like a Polish Netflix. It was both the uh, front end and back end stack servers and so on. So I know the technology behind all of this. It's not uh, like, you know, I wouldn't know how to do this. I can implement it, but fine. It's just not going to work well enough. So, hmm. you know, we can barely uh, watch YouTube videos at 720p on most hardware, right? Yeah. Imagine if you had to encode video at the same time, right? You need well, a lot more power. I, I think the support's coming. I mean, on the on the OS4 side, you know, Hans de Ruder has yeah. done some pretty good jobs in that area. But it foundations first. So uh, let me yeah. open it up to the audience. I'm gonna I'm gonna move our camera here because you're looking at me right now. This is the sorry, it's like going crazy. Um, this is the audience we have here. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, are there any questions oh. for? Um, I'm sorry. I just um I can say Hogana because. It's weird, but I can't pronounce. I can't remember how to say your name. Uh, Yannick, Yannick, right? Are you still there? 
Uh, sorry, but I can I can't really hear you. Oh, anymore. I think the um the uh, sorry the microphone jumped. Testing one two. Huh. Test test. Yeah. Is that it better? Sounds just very well. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. It, it was on the the. It jumped to the the camera. When I pointed the camera away from me, I pointed the mic away. Um, so Yannick, any questions? I'm looking at George. Oh, there's one in the back. Yeah. Which hardware does he intend to use oh. for development? Um, so the question from the audience here is, uh, what's your development hardware? What what systems are you running more for us on? Well, I don't develop way far on more OS, basically. Uh, again, Test. too slow. The power usage is isn't good enough for that. Um, so I'm actually working on a uh, Intel Hackintosh uh, with 12 uh, threads, loads of RAM because you really need that for uh, WebKit. Basically. You need about 16 gigs of RAM to properly link uh, all of the browser libraries. Okay. Uh, and I test on the on the G5 usually. Power PC. But which uh, is it like a G5, a Mac Mini, a laptop? What do you what do you have? Or do you have them all? Uh, I have yeah all of the. I have all most of the PowerBook models uh, and the PCI Express G5s. Got it. And some minis as well, since that's the, you know, like the baseline that I test the performance with. Cool. Any other questions from the audience? George, I was waiting for that. Uh, I know that Jacek uh, does a lot of the updates, but uh, updating WebKit, he has a cycle on catching up with the newer versions of WebKit engine. My question is, Jacek is doing a lot of, uh, of updates for the browser, but for the WebKit engine, does he have a specific cycle of updating that engine? Yeah, so the, the question is that... Um, uh, yeah, I heard. George, did, did you hear it? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so basically, I go with WebKit GPK updates. Uh, mostly because they use the um, a very similar subset of external libraries that I use on the Morph OS. Uh, so their builds usually work without bigger problems. I tried to, like using Apple snapshots and it was simply too much work because a lot, a lot of stuff that I had to use was simply broken. And the web, WebKit GTK mostly is the same stuff. So if you take a stable snapshot of that, uh, chances are pretty high that it's going to work without bigger problems. Introducing, you know, just by the fact that you pulled a version that simply wasn't stable. Any other questions? Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you know, I, uh, our friend Darren um, uh, yeah. said that he uh, hangs out with you, and I'm like, oh, I'd love to have Yana come to the uh, AMOS show and present. Hopefully you can come in person one day. We'd love to have you here. Um, we'll and you really we'll appreciate all your work that you do. Uh, it's inspiring. And uh, I can speak for a lot of Amiga OS 4 people. We're very jealous <laughs> on the Morph OS side. <laughs> so uh, we definitely appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. See you, everyone.